I, Harrison Burke Lassiter. I, Harrison Burke Lassiter. Take you, Emily Clay Vick. Take you, Emily Clay Vick. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I promise to love and cherish you. I promise to love and cherish you. And to be faithful to you. And to be faithful to you. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. <laughs> Harrison and I met on Bumble, um, so it all started with just swiping right. <laughs> um, and our very first date was not too long after that. We went to Taverna Agora, um, and I remember him picking me up, and I was just so excited, so nervous. Um, and then we got there, and the whole time I was just so nervous of like, what is he thinking? What is he feeling? Like, how does he feel about me? What does he think? Um, Cause I knew that I really liked him for sure. But it was just super cool to see like so many connections that we made throughout that date of like, for example, we have lifetime rights in the same NC State football section. So it was super cool to see that all these years, our whole entire lives actually, we have been in the same football section and we never met. So we've passed each other hundreds of times, I'm sure, but didn't know each other. I actually met on Bumble, um, which she made the first move, which like kind of going back to it now, um, it's kind of amazing because when I first met her, she was definitely the more reserved one. Um, but we ended up doing our first date at Taverna Agora, and I was a nervous wreck pretty much during the whole thing. Um, I was really worried about, you know, does she like me? Is she interested? Um, and then before we left, we actually started talking about, you know, state football and both having season tickets. And, you know, we actually grew up going to games and only sitting like 12 rows apart. So we kind of were always near each other our whole lives growing up. And um, looking back on that, I, I think that's when I first knew that, you know, there could be something there. And um, I think it was the real first real big connection that we had and um, and just kind of looking back on it and I, I was so nervous and luckily I had nothing to worry about because you know I think we were meant for each other so after that first date we didn't take too long to go on our second date either we went to Chewy's which actually I didn't even like the dinner but it was so fun just being with him and so we got to know each other better and at that point I was like okay like let's see whether this should keep going any past three dates or like we're just done like go to someone else so that third date we went on a double date with my best friend and her boyfriend at the time We went bowling and we went to Jason's Deli and we had so much fun doing that that we went to drinks afterwards and it was just it was great to see the way that he not only meshed with me so well but he meshed with the people that I care about so much well um, and so they would just play off of each other so well they got along really well it was just it was so fun well, when we first started dating, I think we had four or five dates um, and then the pandemic hit. So I was working in the restaurants at the time. So um, I was, you know, we only really got to see each other once every week. But I remember pretty much every every time we meet, we would get Chipotle and sit on my couch and watch New Girl, 
which to a lot of people that probably doesn't sound really exciting, but I think it, you know, I think it's something that we both really enjoyed doing at the time. And um, it was how we were able to spend time because I was, you know, during the pandemic, there wasn't a lot like we could go out and do. Um, so I just remember having a lot of fun memories of us sitting on my couch, <laughs> watching New Girl and eating Chipotle. Um, and also she ended up going to be a camp counselor that summer. So for that whole summer, it was like, I think I saw her three or four times. And, um, you know, we talked every single night and, you know, I really missed her, but the, you know, three or four times that I got to see her were, you know, I, I would always get super excited that she was coming into town and, you know, we would make all these plans. And um, I remember when she moved into her apartment, getting to help her do that. And um, that, that pretty much was, you know, how that summer went um, before we became really serious. After we had gone out for a couple months, um, of course we started during COVID and so we started out pretty slow because Harrison was working so much and I went to camp for the summer and all that. But after probably six or seven months, we were at a restaurant opening in Durham, um, just something that Harrison had to go to for work. But I remember standing there and he was talking to all these people that I didn't know. And um, typically in that sort of situation, I would be a little bit uncomfortable of like, how do I interact with them? And like, what do I say? And that kind of thing, just being with different people that I don't know. But I was completely comfortable with him and completely comfortable of like, he's right there and he's got it, he's got me and it was just comfortable. It's the whole word that I think of when I think of that time. And that was the first time that I thought about like, wow, this really could be something. Like he could really be the one. I could see myself marrying him. I think really for me when I first, you know, knew I, I really loved her and that, you know, it was, it was serious and I could see spending my, the rest of my life with her was we went to Williamsburg our first Christmas together. Um, we took a trip and we went up there for a weekend and, you know, just spending the weekend for her. Um, for those who don't know, I'm like a huge history nerd. I love especially like early American history. So you need to go to Williamsburg and see everything and talk to her about everything. Um, it may not have been something that, you know, would have been number one on her list, but she was there for it the whole time. And, you know, let me teach her about all the kind of fun stuff at Williamsburg. and. Um, it was just such an awesome trip and that's when, you know, thinking back on that, that's when I first knew that like I could really spend the rest of my life with her and you know, she's the one because I, I mean it was just such a memorable trip and it was the first time that we really, you know, left Raleigh together and really did something big like that. So that was just a, you know, a big first step but also it just went so well that I just knew then that we would, you know, end up getting married. Since we started dating right as COVID started, we never really got a chance for me to show him Meredith and show him where I had spent so much time and I had become the person that now he was getting to know. Um, we had walked around state where he went, but we had just never had the chance to come to Meredith. So on October 16th in 2021, we decided we were going to make a whole morning date out of it. So we went to Waffle House across the street and we got waffles and breakfast and we came over and I gave him a full tour of Meredith. We saw the lake, we saw the front, we saw the dorms that I was in, all of that. And then we finished at the apartments that I was in when I had to leave for COVID and so once we finished that, Harrison said, well, I want to see the fountain a little bit better. I want to see the front and the front drive and all of that a little bit better. And so he had us walk up to that front fountain and we walked around a little bit up there and he got to the front and that's when he pointed me to look at the new lake. So I turned around and he was asking, can you see it? And I was like, well, no, you can't see it. And I just turned right around. And as I turn around, he's fumbling, trying to get the ring out and asked me to marry him. It was really funny because I ended up, you know, getting the ring over the summer and uh, we had it made. So it was supposed to take three months. And I picked the date that we were, I was gonna propose. I know I wanted to do it here at Meredith um, because she went here and it was very special to her. And it's also very beautiful. Um, and I had a date set and a week before 
I was going to propose, the person that was making the ring or the company reached out and said, hey, it's, it's gonna be another few months before, um, or another like six weeks before we can get the ring to you. Like they haven't, they haven't started yet. So it was kind of a scramble trying to like move all the plans that had kind of already put into motion. Um, but I think it ended up, you know, working out really well to where it was a beautiful day. Um, I was super nervous and carried the um, ring box and the sock like my whole day. And I was trying to be super nonchalant about like everything that was going on that day because I didn't want her to know that I was proposing that day. Even though she, I think she had a very, very strong clue that it was going to happen. I knew I had to kind of propose that day because if I didn't, I think uh, Mary Clay would have been very, <laughs> very angry at me. Um, so um, the first two places I wanted to propose actually had a bunch of people at it. So I kind of had to keep pushing it off. And it was pretty much like the, la the last place we were going for the day before we left Meredith. So I think at that point she had kind of been like, okay, I don't think he's gonna propose. So I think it actually worked really well, except for um, when I tried to get her to turn around so I could get down on one knee and open up the box, she, I couldn't, she wouldn't turn around. She kept wanting to look at me. So it was really like, she like turned around for like one second and then she came back around and she saw like, she like saw me like digging through my sock on one knee. So that must have been really funny in her, her eyes. And I thought, I was like, oh, well this is, you know, um, you know, this is a nightmare, but she didn't think so. She thought it was great. Um, and she said yes before I could even ask if, you know, um, she would marry me. She pretty much just said yes right away. Didn't even let me ask, which, uh, which was great for me. Cause I didn't have to, you know, it wasn't, there wasn't any suspense with it or would she say yes, would she say no? It was, you know, <laughs> instantly, yes. The things I love about Harrison, he is so kind, so caring. He does everything he can to make sure that I know how much he cares about me. He protects me. He is like my safe home. Whenever I'm with him, like I said about the first time I knew that I loved him, um, it's just like I'm home with him. Um, he is always there for me. He is supportive of my family and me being a teacher and he is the first one to say I'll help you grade some papers or um, I will fold some laundry or anything that he can do to help me and make my life easier. He pushes me to be more adventurous. He always has an idea of the next thing we should do. Um, he has an idea of let's go to the beach or let's go to an NC State baseball game or that kind of thing. I love that we both are such big NC State fans because that was something that started our relationship so much. First off, I, you know, I love that she makes me want to be a better person. Um, you, know, um, she, you know, she's the reason that I'm, you know, I left the restaurant industry and went back to school so I could spend more time with her and you know, take care of her and have a family with her. Um, and I owe that all to her because without her, I don't know if I would have been able to make that decision or be strong enough to, you know, kind of completely switch my life around at the age of 27. Um, I love that she's super patient with me. Um, I can be all over the place. Um, I can zone out from time to time and I, I kind of have a mind of my own, but she's super patient with me and really understanding of how kind of like how I work and my brain works. Um, and she, she's super kind. Um, She's always nice to everyone. She always gives everyone the benefit of the doubt. Appreciate her about that. Um, she's also super forgiving of people, and that's something I, you know, I value very highly. Um, she's super caring. Um, she cares about me um, more than a lot of people have in the past, and um, I've learned what it means to, you know, really care for someone through her. And she's been, she's been so crucial in that and learning, you know. It's really funny because I'd been the one in relationships before, but I think she really taught me the most about, you know, being in a relationship and, you know, serious relationship. I also love that um, she's so, uh, so genuine, like she doesn't, she, she'll say it how it is, especially if, you know, I'm doing something, she'll, you know, she's not afraid to speak up and, and tell me what she's thinking. And um, I really appreciate that. There's no like having to think about what she's thinking. She's just very upfront about it, which is, you know, helps me a lot. I mean, sometimes I have a hard time reading people. Um, 
Um, I also love that she, you know, she loves me for who I am. She's never asked me to, you know, change or do anything. And she, you know, at the end of the day, she just wants me to be happy and live my best life. And um, I really appreciate that because I think it's something that, especially I need in my life and someone like that that's willing to, you know, I'm always pushing to go, 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 do, 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 be better. But a lot of the time she just says, you know, look back, you know, I'm proud of you. You need to be proud of yourself and see about all you've accomplished. So. In about two and a half hours, we'll be walking down the aisle. Um, I'll see you there at the front. I'm so excited to see you. I'm so excited to start this day and start our life together. Um, I'm so excited that we get to celebrate today, but we also get to celebrate each other for the rest of our lives. Yeah, in two hours. Um, you'll be walking down the aisle and I'm going to be trying not to do my ugly cry face, which I don't, I don't know if you've seen me cry, but it's very, <laughs> it'll be something, but um, I'm really excited to spend the rest of my life with you and I can't wait to see you and I, I can't wait.